Welcome everyone to February virtual release notes. I'm gonna have some more of my coffee because it's raining here, even though it's two o'clock. Um, help wake myself up over here. And while we're letting people come in, if you could just let us know where you're from in the chat. Um, we want to know who's with us today. Of course, Marguerite's here. It's morning over there. Yeah, she's always with us. I love it. We got somebody from Alabama. Skylar, fun fact. I have family in Florence, Alabama. Got Nashville, Tampa, Florida. Oh my gosh, we're all over the place. And good I am normally in uh, DC, Vancouver, uh, but I'm actually moving across the country and I've taken a little detour. So I'm just a little <laughs> south of you in uh, Sun City Center. And I just tell Amber how hot it is here today. So uh, if you want me to uh, pop over and do a quick slight visit, just reach out to me after this. We'll do that. Uh, I just we, are truly, <laughs> we are truly all over the place, just like all of you are. So we're just keeping it interesting over here. Yeah. Wyoming. All right. Got oh, lots of Canadians on here. Love to see yeah. it. Lots of West Coasters. Shannon, we've got, uh, I think now three support people out of uh, Calgary. So our Jackrabbit awesome. Bunnies. Okay, I think everybody is pretty much in there. Amber, you awesome. want to get rolling? Let's do it. All right, so this is the first virtual release notes of 2022. And as you can tell, we are super excited to have this time with you today. Um, and we cannot wait to talk about all the exciting things that the Jackrabbit team has been working on so far this year. Mm -hmm. If this is your first time joining us for virtual release notes, um, welcome to the fun. We are live, and so anything can happen. Um, Marie and I decided back in 2020 that we wanted to deliver the exciting enhancement news in a Q&A style webinar. Virtual release notes was born. Um, so we go down the list of new features one by one, and Marie is our fabulous uh, demoer, like a Vanna White. Um, <laughs> so you can decide what you want to take back to your team and implement once the webinar is over. We'll also send you the recording within 48 hours so you can fast forward into your favorite parts and rewatch again. So before we jump into the exciting stuff, I want to make sure that we all get to know one another well. So in case we haven't met in person, because, you know, we've all had this thing called COVID in the way, um, or we haven't met on the Facebook group or Maybe you've seen my name in your email inbox. Um, my name is Amber and I am the product marketing specialist here at Jackrabbit. And the best part about my job is doing this right here with all of you. So as a former dancer, dance teacher and studio office admin, I understand what's important to you so you can reach that work-life balance you strive for. And as always, I'm joined by my partner in crime, Marie. Hey, Marie. Hey, hey, Amber, hi. Everybody, uh, welcome to our first virtual release notes of 2022. I am so excited for this whole year, Amber. And uh, in case anybody was watching yesterday, we participated in 2 2 day, so it was 2 22 at 2 uh, 22 with uh, one of our partners. So that was a great way to also kind of kick off this new year. If you haven't met me yet, uh, that means you probably haven't attended a webinar. So Slap on the wrist for that. <laughs> but my name is Marie Baldwin, and I'm the training specialist here at Jackrabbit. And Amber and I get to pair up, so I get to do, like she said, all of the demoing. Amber gets to curate all of our words for us today. So, Amber, you ready to get going? Yeah. All right. So before Marie takes over with screen share, um, so she can show us all these fabulous features that we're all here for, I wanted to give you an idea of what we're going to cover today. So because this is our first one of 2020, we've got lots to talk about. And some of these things you may have heard a little chatter about, and some of them could be brand new. And then we also have a release tomorrow, so there's going to be more. Um, so today we're going to look at mul multiple policies, posting registration fees from the parent portal. I'm sure some of you are doing a happy dance in your chair. Student resources in the parent portal. Staff availability in Jackrabbit and the staff portal. Lead file retaining accurate enrollment reporting. Woo, woo, that's a big win. 
and Jackrabbit's brand new in-app resource center. We've also got some other small but mighty updates that we want to tell you about as well. So let's dive in. Marie, you ready to take over? I am. Ah. Just a second. There. And while she's doing that, if anybody is, you know, so excited about anything we have um, going on, please, please, please um, tell us in the chat how excited you are as we go through these. All right, so first things first, let's talk policies. With the new multiple policies feature, you have a lot more flexibility with customizing policies on a class level. Marie, I know we talked about this one before it came out. Um, we had a really big beta test group, but now that it's been released, what are some use cases where you found this one helpful for our clients as you show us around with this one? Okay, well, you know, I know it's still February, but we've actually been seeing a lot of our clients really already ramping up for summer and that means there's summer camps and with that they are using multiple policies so first let's just have a look at where you will go to to manage all of your policies so you're going to come over here to your gear and oopsies under settings and then they've got their own spot right here so we've got policies so the first thing you're going to see is that we have all of our different policies. So in my test database, I've got policies for low enrollment. I've got a photo and video release. Uh, you'll notice that I do have a policy there for summer camp. And then what you can do with your policies is you can actually create different groups of policies. So I'll show you right here. So you can see right here, I've got this one here called 2022 summer camp within that policy group i have got six policies so i can click on it and i can see all of the policies that i have included so you can switch these in and out so for example if i look at my competition team i've just got two policies here so it doesn't mean that if you have a policy assigned to one group that it can't be assigned to another group so you're probably wondering, how do I you know, add these? So let's, let me show you very quickly. So I'm gonna come to my classes, all classes. And under my sessions, I've already got a summer camp session set up. So I just need to click on that visual. So now I've got all of these classes. I'm gonna come over here and I can add a policy group. And I'm gonna add this summer one i can add another group if i wanted to if i wanted to say for example add 21 22 season there as well i can and then you just click on add and it is as simple and as easy as that oh my gosh this one is so powerful and it's something that our clients have needed for a long time our product team did such a great job at delivering this um if you've already started using this or playing around with it, let us know in the chat. I'd love to hear how that's going for you. And while you're typing that in, I'm gonna set it up for the next one. Um, another fan favorite is auto posting registration fees from the parent portal. Marie, can you show us where this is set up and how you can control when and what is posted automatically? I sure can. So again, we're gonna come to settings registration fee and then you will see here so on the left we've got new families so this is exactly how it's always been with your online registration form it's just that it's been moved out of the online registration form settings so that we can set it up for new families and existing families so existing families that is your parent portal so first do you want to charge a registration fee for existing families yes or no if you select it to know everything else automatically doesn't show so i've got mine set to yes and then as well where do you post the fee so do you only want to post it within jackrabbit so if you're enrolling within jackrabbit itself only in the parent portal or do you want the registration fee to post on both and then again you can change your amount one thing i do want to let you all know is that your amount for new families and existing families could be different so a good example is for a brand new family, you're probably 
say going to charge a one-time registration fee of a hundred dollars but every year you want to charge that registration slash annual fee maybe it's only ten dollars so you can have different amounts you do have to though have the same uh transaction type right here and then which session do you want to use and then this here detect registration fees posted after so i've got mine set to january 1st so anybody that has already say registered for a class that does have a registration fee tied to it if they registered in january they are not going to be charged again if they register in say february or even september it's going to look back to january 1st and then another thing that i want to show you all is on the class there is the option has a registration fee so you want to make sure if you are charging registration fees for all of your classes that you have that set or maybe like i was just talking about the summer camps maybe you don't want to charge a registration fee on your summer camps you could absolutely uncheck that box so it doesn't have to be on every single class if you're using that option love that flexibility i knew this one was going to be a hit for our clients uh what a great way to start 2022 um we do have some questions coming in chat i'm going to hold those um just so that we can get to the end and then we'll go back through those um okay. if that's cool with you marie yep all right next let's talk resources so we first released resources in 2020 but since then we've made some updates um, the latest one is the option to share student resources to the parent portal marie can you show us how to do that and tell us what you've heard from clients regarding scenarios where this is super helpful for sure, for sure. one of the most popular ones that i've seen is that um People are adding a student resource for like a progress report or and also for placements. So you don't want it to go like on a class as a resource because you don't want everybody to see, say, what your individual students are progressing at or what level they're going to be put in. And these can be found so easily. So I'm already on my parent portal right now. So if I come here to view Elliot. He has his own tab right here. So I've got a progress report here, and then I've also got a vaccine resource added for him there. I love how the team is always looking to make features better even after they are released. Um, mm -hmm. The work truly does not stop. So always make sure you're putting that feedback in the idea portal. Next up is one of those small but mighty changes. Marie, can you talk to us about the setting added to show additional student medical information in the staff portal and how that is helpful to both our clients and instructors? Sure. Open up my staff portal. I should have had this launched for you already. <laughs> if I come over here to my classes for today, so I'll just go stick right with this first one here. If you come over here, so you'll notice that, say, on Dave and on Elliot, there's this little red medical box. Or I think that's what they call it. I'm calling yeah. it a medical box. Sounds good to me. <laughs> so when you hover over it, it just gives you that information. So the student has an allergy, special needs, medication, disabilities, and or immunization information. If I click on details on this student, you can see immunizations is checked to yes within uh, Elliot's student summary. And then as well, this note. So it just says that fully vaccinated proof of vaccine has been uploaded, which is what I had just shown you as that resource within the uh, parent portal. I love the direction that small adjustments like this um, are doing for our clients. So let's get back to a big one that was released just a couple of weeks ago, staff availability. Um, staff availability did exist before um, on the staff record, but it was a little ancient. Um, so this is the first piece of private lessons and appointments initiative that our team is working very hard to address. And so this is exciting for multiple reasons. Marie, can you show us how to set this up in Jackrabbit and the staff portal? 
I absolutely can. And while I'm going there, guys, you are quite it about the evolution of private lessons in Jackrabbit. Just drop it there in the chat for us as well. So first, I'm going to show you what it looks like within Jackrabbit itself. I'm just going to come back here. Let's come to my staff, my active staff. I've always been a fan of availability, but it feels like a lot of people would forget about it. So right here on the availability tab, isn't this so pretty? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but it is on these yeah. colors. These are colors that I chose. So you would actually just come here under your gear settings general, and then you can come down here and select your color. So those are the colors that I had selected. So that's why mine are those colors. And then just coming back here, so you can see I've got availability put in for February until June that I'm available from four to eight. I can easily add even more availability. So I know right now starting in June, sorry, not for, sorry starting in July, because I've already got up to June done until August. Let's say I'm a student, so I'm out of school for the summer. Let's just say August, we'll do 28th. My daughter's birthday. I know that I can start at 10 a.m. and I can teach until 8 p.m. So I've got that there. If I want to change and have different days and times available, I can. But the wonderful people that are our product people, they came up with copy to all. So it goes every day. I can add a comment there if I need to, like say maybe, you know, Please give me 24 hours notice if you need me to sub a class and then I would stay. And then the same thing with the add time off. You can come here. I can copy it to all. I can just put in only one day. Say, for example, if I had a doctor's appointment. And then just to let you all know that that does show in your weekly calendar. But what I'm more excited about is <laughs> let's get our portal up. We've got my schedule. This is my entire schedule. View availability. And it's exactly what was in the application itself. This is going to take so much work off all of you and have your staff manage their own availability. If you're not using the staff portal, I highly, highly, highly encourage you to do it. It takes a lot of just some of those smaller things like updating skills, taking the attendance off you and putting it onto your staff. So they can easily, even from their phone, if they have this saved, add it at night when they're home and something comes up. And that is it for that one. Awesome, I love it. That alone is like a reason to use the staff portal. Um, so we've got some follow-up questions on that, and we will, we will totally address those um, towards the end. Yeah. All right. Um, let's talk about some updated reports. Um, we'll start with the who's scheduled to be here report. Um, Marie, can you show us what's new to this report and explain how it can be useful in day-to-day -day operations? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Just thinking back, I feel like every virtual room knows I was on a chat shift and but I swear I promise you if this person is on this webinar, you can like put in the chat that this is a true story. Uh, but I was on chat or on a support shift on Monday and somebody messaged in and he was like, I really need to get a message out the following day to everybody that attended a trial. And then I noticed when I went to go log in that they are a Jackrabbit Plus customer. And I was like, oh, let me show you something. So <laughs> under reports, who's scheduled to be here? So for this person, they wanted to go back like the day before and they only wanted people that were trialed. You can absolutely select that. But let's just say, for example, there's a storm coming. Let's use that example. Inclement weather, why not? Hey. So this is everybody that is scheduled to be here today, Wednesday, February 23rd. And then now you can send a message easily to all of them. So 
Not just email or text, but you can also awesome. send okay. that push I notification get if you from... are a Jackrabbit Plus client. And then that gets your messages to everybody that should be in your building right then and there. If you want it to even update it for, say, something for somebody that's attending tomorrow, you could always go back Oops. and just change your date here. But it does default to today's date. A few people in the chat that there is a little bit of sound feedback when you speak so i'm trying to mute myself in case it's coming from reverb from my side which is a total possibility okay so thank you everybody for bearing with us you sound great to me marie so i'm just over here trying to solve problems all right um all right so next up um, another report that had some updates, and I expect to see some celebration in the chat, are the enrollment reports. They now retain data from lead file families. This is huge. So Marie, can you show us what that looks like on one of the enrollment reports and tell us how this eases processes? Uh, yeah, if anybody's confused about it. <laughs> um, I think if the chat, I'm not looking at like the chat right now because I have my screen share up, but if the chat is not full of confetti moments, I will be very, very surprised. So for this example, I'm just going to use the enrollment detail report. So under my reports, I've got this one favorited. So let's just say I am going to check this for all students, so active and inactive, because if I left it as active, any of those archived families to the lead file would not pull up. And let's just say everybody that is enrolled in my winter session. And let's see, I come down here and change this to student. You can see all of them. And then I messed something up. Let me go back. Oh, currently enrolled. All current and past enrollments. You want to make sure you have that one. So you will notice right here. So in this current session, I have a total of 54 enrollments. Of those 54 enrollments, it does include Michael Cooper and Samantha Cooper even though those two students have been archived to the lead file. And another thing that I do want to mention to you that some of you may not realize is that if you look at, for example, Diane, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna go back for one sec here. So you notice Diane had a total of 13 enrollments. Oops, my bad. So I just wanted to let you all know, you'll notice right here that she has currently 11 and it did say 13, but that is because it also includes any drops that they would have had. So I just wanna let you know. So it is like, that's how accurate this report is now. So I'm hoping you're all doing your happy dance in your chairs for that one. It's gonna be cool. Um, why we are talking about how excited people will be. Um, the lead file is an area that you can move people to keep your costs down and also keep your data clean. So um, a lot of people resisted moving people to the lead file because they were scared their accurate or their enrollment reports would not be accurate because um, mm -hmm. it did not show those before. Um, it kept financial reporting great, um, but not the enrollment report. And now that has been fixed. So leave file away. And if you need some help with that, um, you can definitely hit up our support team. All right, so I told you guys we have a lot today. We're just keeping this thing moving. All right, so last year we released the automated tasks of posting tuition and processing e-payments. But Marie, can you show us the latest update to automation? Absolutely. So just to let you know, transactions automation is here. You can see your recent transactions here, but right here we've got our scheduled tasks next 30 days. And this is gonna be really useful for 
anybody that may have set up an automation but did not select to receive the e the uh, email notification like one or two days before you can always come here and check it on your dashboard and i love dashboard links and mute and unmute here and also talking to some of y'all in the chat just multitasking over here all right so last but not least for what has been released so far this year is the brand new jackrabbit resource center and the goal of this resource center is to provide information that you might find helpful or timely while you are already in the jackrabbit application aka maybe you don't want as many emails and maybe you'd rather have it while you're in jackrabbit <laughs> so marie can you give us a tour of this new resource absolutely so some of you may have noticed some of you may not have noticed but we do have this new announcement icon. So if you click on this, this brings up our new Jackrabbit Resource Center. So we have a guided library, which will take you through step by step. So if you want it to say for this one, set a default view on an all families, if you click on it, it just takes you through step by step to show you how to use it. And then we have our latest enhancements. So be sure to check that out. I would say after 11 tomorrow, there'll be some new enhancements listed there. And then we've got news and events. So right here, we've got this, any upcoming webinars, they would be here as well. And then we've got our trainings and video library. So this is just access to different webinars that we feel might be important for you currently so for example virtual release notes was our last release notes uh, once we get the recording for this one amber will go in and update that for you and then we have our good old idea portal so if you want to submit an idea to our product team you just need to click on there and that takes you back through to jackrabbit's idea portal perfection um yes so all i can say is if you're one that forgets to look at the dashboard every once in a while to see what's new, anytime you see a green little number by that announcement icon, that means there's either a new webinar, um, something we think that you'll find important or an enhancement up there. So you definitely want to check that out. Um, but we're just trying to help make sure that we cover all of our bases and get the information to you that we think you find most important. So lots of good stuff in there. Um, and the idea portal was moved into the resource center um, as we get into answering some of these questions if what you're asking for is not available that is the best place to put it when i tell you that the product team looks at it daily i'm not lying they really do i promise you um, so even if something has been released and it's new we're always refining so please show uh, um tell us what you want so I am going to take the screen back and I'll show my face again. Alrighty. Can we see? Okay. Sorry, I've got so many different screens trying to see what's going on here. All right, so what is coming up next? Um, this is um, a list in no particular order that um, refers to what is coming up next and we don't really have anything to show you um, but we do want to let you know what is coming out of the gate next um, when i say next it means like they're already working on it um, there are other things that are slated but we like to talk about what's actually coming next before we get into the big stuff <laughs> so marie can you tell us a little bit about what's coming up next in the jackrabbit world for sure. And like, besides getting to hang with you, Amber, one of my favorite parts is like, I feel like I'm the one who gets to spill the tea all the time. So I love it. Um, so I know I just showed you how instructors can see the immunizations and comments in the staff portal, but honestly, everybody, that is just the start. So we're, we're actually currently working on some cool features for you to be able to report and track all of those immunizations. And we're also gonna be making just some smaller changes with sending emails, texts, and push notifications within Jackrabbit. So similar to what I just showed you in the uh, who's scheduled to be here report. 
And then speaking of texting, we are working with Marguerite might be happy about this because I know she's it's, international. We are going to be yes. working with closely with Twilio to support international texting. Yay. So I have to say, I love like all of these communication enhancements. And uh, I don't want to say I left you know, the best for last, but everybody get ready to give me a thumbs up in the chat. Our team is currently working on and developing the ability to manage substitutes on your class record. So no more kind of having to go in haphazardly last minute and try to swap them out. You can actually, you will actually be able to manage those substitutes from within Jackrabbit. Well, so I know it's you know, lighting it's up in chat. <laughs> Pardon? I said the chat is lighting up. They're excited. Yeah. And I know that that has been a big ask. So I can't wait till I uh, get to debut that one for you. All right, so every time we host one of these, I feel like it's my favorite one, and then we do another one, and then that one's even better. <laughs> um, so we've definitely started off 2022 so strong, and I want to make sure that we give you some next steps no matter where you are in your journey with Jackrabbit. Awesome. I'm just looking at the chat, sorry. <laughs> no, that's exciting. Uh, can you apply different policies based on no, your policies are assigned to your classes, not to your families. But let's just say, for example, you had, because um, this might be what you mean, maybe you are posting uh, some classes by total hours, some classes by class fee, by all means, those ones could have a different set of policies. And let's see. The next one was similar. Similar, yeah, same thing um, for that one. Uh, can parents upload vaccination cards via the portal? And if so, if so, does doing so automatically populate that immunization detail in the staff portal? And that would be, sorry, no, but definitely put that in the idea portal because where they are working on the whole immunization aspect right now, that is something. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Okay. For existing families registration fee, we charge an annual membership fee due upon their anniversary. If we set to yes, do we have to change the detect registration fees posted after each month? Yeah. So now you're manually going in and doing transactions, post annual fees, and then doing it by the month. So if that is the case, uh, you would be best, if you want to keep going with that way, Carla, to turn off the automatic uh, posting in the parent portal. Um, let's see. Will add time off be emailed to a supervisor? That's coming. <laughs> like, like, uh, yeah. We don't like to show what's coming tomorrow because anything could happen. <laughs> But yeah, that part is coming tomorrow. Um, mm, 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 let's see. The next one's pretty same. much the same. Yeah. Uh, does okay. Well, it doesn't. Um, Eileen translate, but it's one piece of that puzzle. That, that's mm -hmm. probably the easiest way for me to answer that one. Mm -hmm. uh, Vax uploading vaccines. I already got it. Uh, okay. Da, da, da. Oh, Amber, you, you you can do this one. What are the benefits of being a Jackrabbit Plus client? <laughs> okay, so um, Jackrabbit Plus is our bundled subscription. So Jackrabbit, which you already have, hopefully, and love, um, plus our mobile app, which is powered by Mobile Inventor. So it's kind of like the parent portal on speed. Um, and the fact that you get all the same things in the parent portal, um, but you get more functionality. So um, I think we can all agree that you can send an email with all the details or, you know, a timely email and someone didn't get it or didn't read it. Um, so with the mobile app, you can use push notifications. Um, and we're all used to that, no matter what kind of phone you have. Um, you're used to push notifications showing up on your home screen um, from any app that you have downloaded on your phone. 
Um, you can also, as Marguerite said, you can do punch passes. So a, a pay as you go, whether that's for adult classes or an open gym or something like that, you have that option. Um, recently, we also released the ability to sell gift cards through the app. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, it's just a lot more functionality. It's branded and matches your website, which Mobile Inventor does that legwork for you. Um, and parents don't have to keep logging in. They don't have to bookmark it on their cell phone. It is a true app in the App Store, which is pretty cool to see your own um, app in the Apple and Google Play Store. Um, so I did drop that um, website in the chat. So if you wanna know more about it, you can upgrade at any time. Um, I definitely encourage you to check it out because it takes communication and connection with your clients and customers to the whole next level. So, great question. <laughs> um, so the next one's also related to the app. So for the push notification, um, they do have to have the app on their phone in order to receive that. Um, but I've seen different organizations do like contests about show us show us the app on your phone you entered into a raffle and then you give away a gift card or a prize or something so um, you can definitely do things to encourage people to download the app um, so that you have a lot of adoption of that Just reading through i just saw some out there Uh, of course, uh, registration earlier is it possible to, to do that with the registration fees update. If you're wanting to charge, let's say, like every September, um, you would be best to use transactions post annual fees because if not, it's going to take the first time that they register for a class. Uh, but if you say are using September, you could change that start date. I just had mine as January, but you could change it for September even. And then Amber, I'm just going to share my screen. Yep. I lost the question, but I know it was there. If somebody yes. wants to know what I had. Enrollment detail. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And here it's coming. There it is. So everything I just made a favorite to make it easier for you. So everything that's in yellow, that's what I had. So active classes was set to no. Student status was left blank. Enrollment status was all current and past enrollments. And then just to kind of dial down my list a little bit, I did 2022 winter. And then, so you can have it on enrollment details. I come here and then you can see here all of their classes or like when I did my demo earlier, I just had it on the student summary. And then you would see it here, but it's nice. I like that they capitalized archived so that you can all like mm -hmm. easily, easily see that. Yep. And then there was another one on the immunization tracking. Will that work for staff as well? That I don't know. That is a great one to put in the idea portal. Um, that way, if it's not in the plan, it could possibly be addressed at the same time. Um, if it is in the plan, then you just let them know that more people want it. Yeah. So, and don't forget, you, know, you can add a resource to uh, your staff. So I'll just show, let me split over here again. <laughs> so right here, so you can add a resource to your staff there if you want it to go ahead and upload that as well. Perfect. That is it. All right, Marie, you want to let them know where they can go next if they've got more questions? they absolutely can reach out to support <laughs> so just click on that little uh the question mark icon in the top right hand corner of your uh application uh even if chat is closed there's always somebody watching tickets uh mm -hmm. if you need to as well if you're just checking out jackrabbit and you want more information you can shoot us an email at info at jackrabbittech.com and always 
check out our website, especially our blogs. Like they are always being updated. So it's not just necessarily using the application, but more kind of business building, you know, mm -hmm. tips for helping you get branded, increasing your enrollment, which we all want you to do. So yeah, check out jackrabbitclass.com. And that is it for us, Amber. All right, let's keep this relationship going. All right, yeah. let's be friends on social media. Um, you can like our Facebook page. If you're a client, you can join our Facebook user group. Just search yeah. for Jackrabbit Software User Group. Um, follow us on Instagram. We like to be fun and cheeky on Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We use all of these channels to talk about upcoming webinars just like this and share on demand viewing. So thank you all for joining us today and engaging with us. Um, we are so pumped to be right back at it. For sure. Thank you, Amber. Bye everybody. Thanks all right, have a good day.